So, in uh, this little tutorial, we are going to be looking at how to use Radiant for running a simple linear regression. And uh, to begin with, I will assume that you have all downloaded and installed Radiant and the associated applications uh, it's using R, our studio, and um, also have gone through some of these initial videos and tutorials which are very useful to get a, a good first idea of, of how Radiant works and uh, how to use the interface. And uh, assuming you've done all of that, we will run through a simple linear regression continuing with the data set uh, that was used for the theory videos which was about a family's consumption and we have some information on the family's income. So let's say we've got this data set, which in this case is a CSV a comma separated file, simply including income and consumption as two variables. And what we're interested in doing is we're interested in explaining different consumption levels or predicting different consumption levels based on a family's income. And we have about 40 cases and the question now is how do we proceed to do this in Radiant? So I will close this for now and I'll start by opening Radiant. And the way we do this, there are a couple of different ways after you've installed it, is through opening our studio. And once you've opened our studio and you have indeed installed Radiant, you have a little add ends button up here and you can select Radiant which will then automatically start Radiant without having to use any code. And Radiant works through our browser. So in this case, I'm using Mac and it's opening Safari. And here I've got the Radiant interface, which always starts with the example data set uh, of different diamonds and different diamonds prices. And we're not interested in that for now. We are interested in working with our consumption data set. So how do we get this consumption data set into Radiant? Well, again, there are different ways. Um, we may simply copy and paste, uh, which I'll show you later. Um, but uh, generally, the, the way that we'll work with most of the time is we have a CSV data file and we want to import it. So when you're in the data tab, uh, you have the option of loading data of different types and what we will want to do is we will want to load a CSV file at which point we're now given a couple of options and usually the default works for us it's just simply asking how this uh, CSV is formatted if we have a header such as price, carrot, clarity, in our case income and consumption and we'll leave everything at default and we'll select our data set And here it goes. So it's only showing us a preview, but everything looks like it's it's worked out correctly. We've got the headers and we've got our different uh, values of consumption and income. So at this point, uh, generally we would probably uh, do some exploratory initial analysis and, and visualize the data in different ways, but today we'll just focus on how to, to run the actual regression. But uh, just to begin with, we may look at uh, uh, some simple summary statistics by clicking on the Explore tab and selecting uh, a, a variable or simply both variables together and we're given some of the summary statistics that we'd usually want to look at to see how these values are distributed so they have a good amount of variance of, on income as well as consumption and uh, the average values of consumption is 133 and it's about 100 on income. So at that point, uh, the question is, how do we run our linear regression? How do we construct a model that tries to predict or explain different levels of consumption based on uh, a family's income? And the way we do this is by simply clicking on the model tab up here and selecting our linear regression option. Um, but actually, before we go there, I'm just going to start using one of the incredibly useful 
uh, functionalities of Radiant, which is to record everything that we've done in our analysis and to create a nice report which makes it uh, first of all easy to to use the report uh, and deliver it for a client or for a class assignment um, and add some description of the analysis and have them nicely organized but equally important uh, or if not even more is also that the report will allow us to record what have we done in terms of the analysis and, and allow us to replicate the, that analysis. So in order to save something, in this case the simple uh, initial table of, of summary statistics to our report, what we do is we just simply click on, as you may have seen in some of the other videos, uh, on the report results button. And as soon as we click on that, um, we go to the report view, the report tab, which in this case simply includes our little um, summary statistics table. And the way we see this is by selecting uh, a portion of the report in this case and clicking on net report and we've got our summary table. And we may start giving this report a title and in this case it could be explaining uh, a family's uh, consumption level by its income or let's say analyzing and we have a nice title next we start with the actual regression so Let's go back to where we were, which was here. So we've recorded that. We've made sure we can go back to what we've done this far. Um, and we're ready to run the regression. So we'll open the model tab, linear regression. And in linear regression, it'll simply ask us, uh, what do we want to predict? So our dependent variable or response variable in this case is consumption. Now what do we want to use as predictors or as explanatory variables, our independent variables? Well in this case we only have income. So we will select income and it gives us a couple of additional options such as whether we want to get the confidence intervals which is generally what we want, um, whether we want the RMSE which we'll later work with, for now we don't need that, and a couple of other options which we'll discuss later. For now, all we select is the confidence intervals and we click on estimate. And we instantly get the result of our linear regression. And what it shows you, without going into much further detail here for now, is that we have a positive effect, so a positive coefficient, which is statistically significant, of income on a family's consumption level, which means that the higher the income, the higher the consumption level. And more specifically, uh, the coefficient tells us that with an additional unit of income, which we haven't actually dis defined, uh, let's say it's a, it could be expressed in a thousand dollars, but whatever the unit is, an additional unit of income will create or result or is rather simply associated with an additional 0.85 units of consumption. And um, we can now, first of all, ask for this to be added to our report. So we would report these results. And this now, if we select it all, will give us not only our summary statistics, but then it will also give us our nice simple linear regression that we've run. To look at later on. Something we might want to do at this point is to actually look at uh, some of the assumptions of our regression, whether we met them, whether there are any problems with the residuals, etc. And so we can go back into the model and uh, linear regression tab and click on the uh, plots tab. In the plots tab there's something very useful for us uh, that you can select in the regression plots which is called the dashboard. The dashboard 
shows us or gives us a number of different plots which not only allows us to check for whether we've met uh, the regression assumptions but also at the same time allows us to check how well our model fits to the data and whether there are any unexplained patterns and we'll talk a lot more about this later on so I won't go into any details here for now but this will be an important plot to create and to look at in diagnosing how well our regression actually fits the data and and how well our model uh, um, meets the different assumptions. Now, at that point, um, we may or may not add this to our report. I will leave this out for now. Something that we actually may want to add is a nice visual uh, representation of our regression line as we see up here. And we can do this uh, by clicking on the data tab and clicking on visualize and creating a simple scatter plot of uh, consumption which we'd like to predict based on income. And we get the scatter plot and we can add a regression line to it by selecting the line option down here. And we get a nice little um, regression which is our prediction line and we also get a confidence interval for our regression line which is the blue shaded area. Now as we see of course our prediction seems to fit the data quite well um, however there are plenty of residuals which are the differences between the actual values of consumption that we'd like to predict in our predictions for a particular amount of income in this case about a hundred and eight we've got a predicted consumption level of about 142 and it turns out that we have two actual consumption levels for that amount of income which are approximately 144 and 150 147 uh, or so uh, so there there are some residuals and we can save this plot to our report and so right now we've got a nice little report that shows us the summary stats, our linear regression output, as well as a visual graph of our regression line. Something that we may want to do is to actually create the predictions for all of these different levels of income um, in our data. So how what value of consumption do we predict for all of these different individual families in our data set using our regression uh, equation and we can do this for the data that we already have as we have now but we could also use this for new observations to predict the level of consumptions uh, if we have an income level that falls somewhere between our uh, min and max in this case and so we can do this going back into the model tab and going into the predict option up here and in the predict option <clears throat> what it's going to ask us is what do we want to predict for and in this case we want to predict for some data which is our consumption data and immediately we already get this uh, output giving us the different predictions for consumption based on our regression model and the inputs here are different income levels for these different families. It also includes a confidence interval for us. And we can save these predictions to our data set by simply clicking store here and it'll be called predict reg. So we've got a new variable uh, which is our predicted levels of consumption. So we should also see this in our data so we've got a new variable here that we just saved and something that we may want to do, let me go back here, is to actually also save these predicted values into our report because it's just 40 uh, different values so we can actually look at all of them if that could be of some use later on. And so we, cop we copy this uh, to our report and <clears throat> at this point we've got our results and some predicted values. The last thing that we may want to do, <clears throat> and by the way, we can change some of these options here in the actual code, which sometimes may come in very handy 
you're not going to be required to do this uh, much at all but in this case for instance uh, it shows us here it's it's printing so it's showing the predicted values for the first 10 but we can just change this to all of the 40 and now we'll actually get um, a nice table with all of the predicted consumption levels for all of our 40 different um, families or households. So now that we've created our different predictions, remember that when we're creating predictions we're not necessarily primarily interested in the spot forecasts or point forecasts, but we're also interested in the uh, possible or to be expected uh, variation around these point forecasts. So what's the confidence interval for, uh, for a particular prediction given an income level? And these are called prediction intervals. And we can create these and we can plot these in the following way. And this is also an example of what we can do whenever Radiant doesn't offer a pre-defined uh, or already existing option for, for something that we would like to do or analyze. Uh, and that is we can write this in code using R in, in this Radiant uh, interface and we can use R and we already see the R code of what we did before uh, by opening up the brackets in this way and then we can write whatever expression we would like to run in this case we would like to create a regression um, in our data set so same as before, um, using consumption as our dependent variable and income as our independent variable. And we would like to predict for the same data and plot this in a nice little graph and income will be on the x-axis and our predicted values for consumption will be on the y. Now, unless I made some mistake here in writing this out, it should give us the regression line as we had before. And the gray shaded area is actually the prediction interval, which basically tells us that if we have a forecast or a prediction for somebody with a income level of 110, then our predicted value for consumption is around 144 or 143. However, uh, over repeated cases, so in 95% of the cases, we could only say that that spot forecast will be somewhere between 150 and 135. So uh, we do not expect for all of the actual values for somebody with a predicted income of 110 to be exactly 144, far from it. But we do expect it to be somewhere uh, between the lower and upper limit of this prediction interval for that particular forecast. And so we can knit this all together and maybe uh, to end off with we can actually describe it a little bit better so we've got a heading We've got our initial uh, summary statistics, descriptive statistics, and then uh, we start with the regression. So let's just say um, we don't want to make any further changes uh, for now. Uh, what do we do now? So we've got this report. We can actually save it in different formats. So as an HTML, as a PDF, uh, so you could send it to someone as a word file. Um, what I'm going to do now or for now is to simply save it as a notebook which will be very useful both to keep it and to be able to replicate this analysis later on. So it saves it as an HTML file and the notebook basically gives us 
that report and shows us what we've just done. Um, but the very useful thing is that it actually offers uh, the code in a hidden or shown version. So uh, how do we get to these tables? Well, here's the code with which we could replicate that analysis. And so um, that's one way of, of saving the results. Uh, we can also export it as a PDF. And in that case, it creates a nice report for us in PDF format that we can then share or email to somebody. And here we go. So this is how it looks like in PDF. And we could add a lot of text. We could uh, say uh, this is only the beginning of a extensive analysis of consumption levels. And then this text will be shown to us in the report. And um, I'll leave it at that for now. So this was how we can run a linear regression in Radiant, including checking some of our assumptions, uh, creating some predictions, looking at how much confidence we have in those predictions, and creating a nice little report that we can then share and continue to work on.